Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the sixth round. Gravante Davis's KO of Leo Santa Cruz, who had never been legitimately knocked down before in a fight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, the sixth round is one of the best rounds of the year. Leo Santa Cruz has a habit of leaning forward in the pocket. What he does is he uses his shoulders. It's a two-handed attack. He picks an entry point, he jumps in, you're lodged there. He has you framed on his shoulder. Then he starts throwing both hands. You're dealing with a guy who throws volume. In the pre-fight appearances that he made with Southpaw Gervonta Davis, you noticed that even though Santa Cruz was coming up from a lower weight, the two men were about the same size. Looked like Santa Cruz might even be a little bit bigger than Davis. Right? Let's remember, Davis was actually the champion at 130 pounds. Then, of course, moved up to 135, beat Yorkies Gamboa, and now was back down at 130. So I'm sure many casual bettors looked at the two guys and thought, wow, they're around the same size. Wow, Santa Cruz has fought some major technicians. Right? Carl Frampton. And Santa Cruz throws more punches than Gervonta Davis. Well, let me just say, in the sixth round, what I want people to do is to kill the volume on the fight. Just kill the volume on the fight. Because you're going to find out that there's a ringer in this fight. There's a guy who's a card player in this fight. Right? Who he is in real life is different than the image he portrays. The sixth round is really a mental exercise, more than it is anything else. The card player in this match is Gervonta Davis. He wins this fight on strategy. After Santa Cruz gets hit low by Davis, and keep in mind, it's debatable because Santa Cruz keeps leaning forward. So Santa Cruz is coming in low, right? And Davis has spent much of the fight, much of it, throwing wicked left hooks and uppercuts to Santa Cruz's body. So understand, Davis by design is throwing left hands from down low. Whatever happens in the action, Right? The two guys are fighting and stuff like that. Davis makes sure, even as he's getting hit with headshots in this high action fight, he makes sure that he's in a position to throw body shots. So Santa Cruz is leaning over in the sixth round. He gets hit by a shot that's called a body shot. He's given time to recover. Right? Without the volume. What I want you to see is what comes next. Santa Cruz mounts an assault. He's coming forward. He's using his shoulders. He's throwing both hands. He's throwing shots up top. Now Davis, who at different times in this fight, is using different defenses. Davis doesn't want the action to stop. Davis is moving his upper body, right? This is not the slugger trying to overpower an opponent. No, this is the guy who's looking for a moment, a specific opportunity. So Davis is moving his upper body. Davis then lifts his hands. He doesn't do this every exchange. Davis lifts his hands 
to catch Santa Cruz's shots on his forearms. Right? You notice Davis is watching Santa Cruz. Look at his eyes. He's watching Santa Cruz as Santa Cruz is throwing punches. Davis then gets Santa Cruz to back up, right? They're over by the ropes um, on one part of the ring. Then Davis gets the dynamic where Santa Cruz is between him and the ropes, right? Backing over to a corner. Now, Davis is not wasting any shots. Davis is catching shots. So then Davis, while Santa Cruz is throwing shots, while the crowd is excited, while it looks like Santa Cruz is making a stand, Davis is looking at him throwing shots, and what does Davis throw? The southpaw throws a left uppercut as Santa Cruz, who's throwing punches, is leaning forward. The shot lands flush, game, set, and match. It's over. Davis hit Santa Cruz so hard that the referee, when he jumps in, he immediately calls an end to the proceeding. And so, here's what I want people to consider. Because Davis simply put, and he delivered for us in this fight, but Davis simply put, is much better than I thought he was. Folks, there is no rush from Gervonta Davis in that sixth round. Understand, too, he was landing that left hand to the body the entire fight. Whatever happened in you know, exchanges, right? Santa Cruz comes in, he's throwing shots, the crowd's going crazy. You notice Davis would come in with that left, right? On occasion, he would bend his knees and throw a left hand to the body, a straight left. But it's his left hooks that were withering. And when you're throwing a left hook from down low, an opponent can't tell if it's a left hook to the body or if you're throwing a left uppercut. Let me also say, too, that you'll notice in the sixth round, and it's striking, Davis, who has a very good jab, he doesn't use it that much in this fight, but he has a very good jab. You'll notice that Davis, while Santa Cruz is throwing punches, is seeing the gaps to the point where Davis lands an excellent right hook not too long before he closes the show with the left uppercut. Right? In other words, this is a technician. Right? Think about it. Gervonta Davis, who's been front foot heavy destroying guys, is actually a technician who, in my opinion, is going through three minute rounds against a fighter who he knows has holes, picking specific spots, right, literally, letting the transaction go forward, right? He actually wants Leo Santa Cruz in the pocket. He's not using a lot of lateral movement to kind of like, you know, stop the action. No, he wants the action to go forward because he knows he has enough head movement. Right again, kill the volume, just look at his upper body. Then notice how he has his hands up and how patient he is. This is a guy who figured out Santa Cruz can't badly hurt me. I need for him to throw shots because it creates openings. You know who thinks like this? Teofimo Lopez. So here you have heavy-handed, high KO percentage, Gervonta Davis, 
picking his spots, waiting for specific opportunities. Folks, the right hook lands flush on Leo Santa Cruz's face. But Davis is in no rush. He lets Santa Cruz throw many more punches. He's extremely patient, and you'll notice he's not throwing a lot of punches back. This isn't a free-for-all. He's just edging Santa Cruz, who's throwing punches over toward the ropes so he has less wiggle room, less of a place to go. And then Davis throws one punch. That left uppercut. So, I don't say this lightly, and I know there are a lot of names out there. Up-and-comers, guys who have arrived, future Boxing Hall of Famers. But as I see it from this seat, boxing has one incredibly big mega fight at 135 pounds that it needs to put on right now. And that's unbeaten Teofimo Lopez, who holds several belts at 135. And Gervonta Davis, who's also unbeaten. Right? I know there are other guys out there. There's Loma, there's Devin Haney. Neither Loma nor Devin Haney hits as hard as Teofimo Lopez and Gervonta Davis. Not only that, Understand, both Lopez and Davis are card players. They're counter punchers, right? Both guys have good jabs. I don't mean to diminish their jabs, but these are guys reading you. This is different. This is very different than a Leo Santa Cruz, who's a lead puncher a lot of the time. Right? This is very different than combination punchers. Right? These guys are looking for moments. Neither guy is going to be moving around the ring a lot like Devin Haney or Lomachenko would. And let's face it too. Both men are coming off big fights. This was a dramatic fight, folks. I know Davis was a big favorite, but this was a dramatic fight. Leo Santa Cruz thought he could out volume, outwork Gervonta Davis. Right? This was a big fight. Let's just say Lopez, no rematch clause with Loma. Here you have Gervonta Davis. You know in a fight it's going to be the two guys looking for opportunities. Davis, who can move forward on his front foot, right? He starts this fight moving forward, getting Leo Santa Cruz to back up, right? You know that Davis is going to try to collapse the pocket on Teofimo Lopez. You understand that Lopez is a guy who, if you don't defuse him, Right? He has hand speed. He's extremely accurate. Extremely accurate. Right? Style-wise, that's a great fight. Let me also say, too, that both of these guys have fought tough opponents. I don't want to hear about Ryan Garcia right now. Right? Luke Campbell is going to be Ryan Garcia's biggest opponent to date. Understand, Gervonta Davis has beaten... Jose Pedraza, for example. Right? And so to me, if boxing's going to give us an A-plus fight, and there are several A-plus fights out there that boxing hasn't given us, right? When is Terrence Crawford ever going to fight Errol Spence? Right? Let's, let's face it. That fight hasn't happened. I'd love to see Mikey Garcia against Manny Pacquiao. Right? The, the bad habit boxing has is an A-plus fight presents itself. Manny Pacquiao against Floyd Mayweather. And then they keep you waiting so long that it starts to become a Amir Khan, Kell Brook situation where you don't even want to hear about the fight after a while. 
Then even if the guys were to sign the fight, it's past its expiration date. Well, boxing needs to get this one right. Right? Loma is having surgery. Right? Loma and Devin Haney are different type fighters than the surgical Gravante Davis, folks. That's what he is here. He's surgical. Understand, you see him thinking. You see him realizing that he could land that left hook to the body all day. This fight ended in the sixth round. What's obvious earlier in the fight is that Gravante Davis is making the investments with the body shots to wither Santa Cruz in the later rounds. We don't get to rounds 9 or 10 or 11, but understand, one of the reasons Leo Santa Cruz is leaning over before the last shot is because Davis has taken away his body. Let me say this too. You notice this with card players. Davis, in the sixth round, as the crowd, is going crazy for Santa Cruz. As Santa Cruz, after the low blow and the break, makes a mounted stand, the math guys, we'll call them, the technicians who are thinking, okay, when he's throwing and leaning forward, I have a left hand. Because I've thrown so many left hooks to the guy's body, he might even think it's going to be to the body. I'll just turn it up and hit him in the head. He's naked under his chin. Right? You could see Davis also. When he's getting combinations from Leo Santa Cruz, is just thinking, okay, look, I don't want to clinch him because I want him throwing punches because those punches are causing the openings. But I don't want to get hit with shots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving my upper body like this, right? Without the volume, you notice the movement, right? He's moving his upper body like this. Then you notice he has his hands up where he's just catching shots. He's not trying to overextend himself with volume. You notice the few shots he throws, that right hand I was telling you about, his offhand, that shot lands flush. You then understand that for all the activity that Leo Santa Cruz is doing, Davis has him timed. Right? Davis knows that left hand is there. Davis knows where they are in the ring. Right? Davis knows. Right? The sixth round is a must-watch in the first five rounds. Both guys win rounds. But even in the rounds that Leo Santa Cruz wins, I want you to just key on Davis's left hand. Folks, you know Tank hits like a tank. He's landing that left hand way too much. Understand there is a difference in this fight in punching power. A punch is not a punch, right? When Santa Cruz lands a punch, you say, okay, that's a scoring blow. When Davis lands shots, no, no, that's, that's on the road to getting a knockout. That's a debilitating blow, right? Davis lands so many left hands. that I started to think, just watching the fight, okay, well, there is no way that Santa Cruz is going to be able to stand up the whole way through. And understand, Santa Cruz had only been knocked down once before in his career, and that was often a legal punch. He had never been knocked down legally. <laughs> right? So you understood, Davis is putting in the work. You understood, Davis wasn't afraid of having Santa Cruz throw more punches than him. You also notice too, Davis is collapsing the pocket, then you notice there are times where 
Davis decides not to come forward. He actually has Santa Cruz walking into his shots. Right? Davis, I don't care what he says in an interview. You know how fighters are. They, um, they'll say, who are you fighting next? And many fighters will say, oh, you know, whoever they put in front of me, I trust my team. <laughs> right? You have many fighters in this day and age of internet films and digital photography. You have many fighters claiming they haven't even seen their opponent and stuff like that. I don't care what image Davis throws in public. He has an extensive amateur pedigree. Extensive. And the guy's the kind of guy who can outthink an opponent. Folks, putting it simply here, Davis outthinks Leo Santa Cruz. Maybe Santa Cruz thought he was mounting a stand in that sixth round. He's actually being set up for the end of the fight, for the knockout that happens coincidentally in the corner of the ring. <laughs> right? Santa Cruz gets hit, then he's under the bottom rope. Right? You you notice Davis is making sure. He's in position to throw that punch, right? He's not throwing other punches where the opening happens when he's extended. No. He lets Santa Cruz throw. And he's ready for the counter. This is a guy who has enough power to lead, to walk through guys. Here, he lets the guy coming up in weight lean over the pocket, throw, he wants him to engage because as he engages, Santa Cruz is seeing, as many counters do, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Understand, he hits Santa Cruz so flush, the punch is not blocked. In other words, this is kind of like the Pervetkin KO of Dylan White. Right? One guy thinks he's on a roll. He gets hit where? On the chin. <laughs> Complete setup. Checkmate. Blackjack. Whatever you want to call it. Give us Loma. Excuse me. Give us Teofimo. Against Gervonta boxing. Right? We can just look at Teofimo Lopez and know that he won't be able to stay at 135 forever. Right? Big frame. He's going to fill out. I don't care what the fighters say, right? Every fighter wants you to believe, I could stay at this weight the rest of my career, right? We know Teofimo Lopez eventually is going to have to move up to 140. Give us unbeaten Teofimo Lopez against unbeaten Gervonta Davis right now, right? Neither guy will have to worry about the other guy dancing the night away from the outside. Both would be looking to land very heavy counters. That fight would be a faint fest. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.